So I've learned a lot of things during my past three years of running and operating my social media marketing agency. Now I want to share these lessons with you that took me three years to understand and gather just so I can speed up your own learning curve in this journey. Now these are not going to be some BS, highly motivational lessons. These are going to be actionable things that you can take home today and apply into your own mental frameworks. Because I did not just come up with these lessons from thin air. These have been gathered over the past years of me operating my agency every single day and learning and making mistakes and learning from these mistakes. And the other day I just sat down, took out my journal and noted down every single thing that I've learned that I could share with you guys today. So obviously there's a lot of things that I've learned, but I've picked up the top five things that I think will help you get ahead way quicker in your own journey. And if you apply them, and I mean actually apply them after watching this video, I can promise you will start noticing a shift in the way that you think and look at your business. So yeah, make sure to watch the video all the way throughout to the end. And without further ado, let's get right into it. So as many of you know, I've been running my agency, Say Media, for the last couple of years now, and I started off in the same position as you did, right? I was confused. I bought a 997 course, which didn't really help me. I did some manual outreach. I had no offer that I presented to my target audience. I mean, my offer was simply Facebook ads, Facebook advertising, right? I had no clue how to deliver my service, how to run ads. I was constantly running around in circles, uh, basically trying out a bunch of different things, watching a bunch of different YouTube videos, uh, getting stuck, you know, in all the analysis and getting paralyzed by it. And I was just building my website for the 10th time. Right, that was literally what I was doing when I first started out, or at least in the first couple of months. Right, uh, you can see some photos here. Right, uh, this is me basically going through that 997 course, trying to understand uh, Facebook advertising, how to report to clients, and so forth. Uh, I remember sitting down like for three, four, five hours a day. Um, in all honesty, looking back at it now, doing some pretty meaningless stuff right stuff that didn't really move the needle forward and now after three years of doing this or two and a half years of doing this i think i can say that i understand the game right if you were to give me an offer i'll be able to scale it from zero to 10k pretty easily just because i've done it before i've done it twice now uh, so i understand the steps that i need to take in order to do that i never do manual outreach ever again right because i understand that agencies and coaching businesses that are able to create leverage are the ones that are able to grow uh, really quick, right? Compared to an agency or coaching business who's still relying on referrals, word of mouth, uh, doing manual outreach, building up their network, right? Um, I understand how to create that leverage. And now, finally, I mean, I have my offer dialed in, right? So for every offer that I create, I have it dialed in. So, here are some screenshots on my calendar, some proof. Uh, if you do want like more proof of how I was able to scale my offers, you can check this video out. I'm going to link it in the comment section down below. But this basically just breaks down my entire process of scaling my offer. Literally just last year during summer 2023, I've been able to scale a home improvement offer to $25,000 in monthly revenue in about 60 days. So what is this video about? In today's video, I want to share some of the lessons I personally gained whilst going through the transformation of having no clue how to make money online, how to make this agency thing work, basically being a noob to understanding the game and to getting good at this and, you know, being able to scale any offer to 10 per month if you were to give me that offer. Now, keep in mind, if you are watching this video because you want to mentally please yourself, this is not going to be some BS motivational lesson because the other day I literally just sat down and I looked back at my journals that I kept throughout my journey. I literally have like six journals that are all filled up, right? Because I journal a lot and I, I write down the key things that I've learned. And I noted down the things that basically truly helped me get to the place I am in now, right? There's going to be five lessons in here in this video. And these five things are probably the biggest things that I've learned throughout my past two and a half or three years now of running my social media marketing agency. So all I ask you to do, 
is please take these back home, think about it, understand them and apply them into your own mental frameworks. So lesson number one, you need to have an ability to shut down and create laser focus because you got to understand that the world is populated with distractions at every single corner, right? Even on your desktop browser right now, I bet you have so many tabs open right now and you kind of go about multitasking different things or you have your phone right next to you with notifications on, um, with Twitter on, whatever is on, whatever you guys do on your phone. And you're basically surrounded by distractions, right? You have YouTube open, you watched a bunch of YouTube videos this morning. And I can tell you right now that real winners in the space, and by winners, I mean people that are able to make this agency thing work, have laser focus, right? Have laser focus at all times. And they do not fall victims, right? To analyzing all the notifications that come in, analyzing all the videos uh, that are published in the space, right? Analyzing all the blogs, all the twi tweets and stuff, right? They just have laser focus on one single thing. They shut down, try everything off and just focus on that one thing, right? Because your focus and ascension is the new digital currency, right? And you got to understand that everything out there is praying for it, right? Today, today's world is populated with a bunch of useless stuff that we consume on a daily basis. And you know, it might not seem like a big deal for you now, like, oh, let me just go scroll through reels for like a couple minutes. But trust me, over time, your ability to maintain focus on one task can diminish really quickly, right? And before I started my agency and even the first couple of months of running my agency, you know, I, I was spent quite a few good amount of hours on TikTok, just scrolling the for you page, mindlessly laying in my bed, right? When I was procrastinating. And I didn't really notice the effects of it until I realized that I can't focus on stuff. Like if you were to sit me down, I just couldn't focus, right? I would have my phone on, I would scroll through TikTok whilst doing a task, then I would come back to the task and it would take me like a couple of hours to finish something, right? So I deleted everything, right? Deleted everything of my desktop or my iPhone. I don't have any social media apps on my iPhone. Um, the best way is basically just delete stuff, right? All these app blockers and stuff like that, they don't really work, right? Because these they still let you go to the source. So what's better to do is basically just delete the source and just delete it and forget about it, right? So another reason why all these distractions are a problem is because it can cause a lot of comparison. It can cause the grass is greener syndrome right? It can give you or make you impatient and it can make you quit, right? Because when we are on social media or when we are watching YouTube videos, we are in a state of these four things, right? Whether we're comparing ourselves to someone else's success, whether we are now starting to think that, okay, the grass is greener on the other side, we are becoming then impatient with whatever we're currently doing. And then that impatience grows into frustration until we end up quitting, right? So these four things really impact your decision, right? your decision making, right? Because you are influenced by external factors, right? Rather than internal factors, rather than logic, you are influenced by external factors uh, and by all the emotions that these external factors bring, right? Think about it, right? Let's say you start an agency and then you go on Instagram Reels or YouTube and someone says, this is the best new business model this is the best new strategy to make money, right? Even if you give that a watch, this information will be embedded in your head and your brain will keep bringing it up due to the grass is greener syndrome. And over time, right, you will switch or quit or be persuaded by yourself to try out this new business model and to quit whatever it is you're currently doing now. Now, imagine doing this every day, right? Going on social media, scrolling through your feed and keep on seeing you know, people posting about how much money they're making, trying to sell you something, uh, people boasting about their success, uh, people showing you a new way of doing things, right? These things over time, they compound. And sooner or later, you are going to be left agitated with the thing that you're currently doing, right? And then you'll quit, right? Simple as that. So what I learned, my first and most important lesson is to be able to shut these things off, put on horse blinders, right? 
and focus on going into one direction. And this applies to everything, whether it's a task at hand, whether it's the you know, strategy you're trying, the system you're trying, uh, the offer that you're running, the niche that you went into, the business model that you went into, right? Focus on having one of each, right? Not multiple of each because then it gets hard. Just have one of each, put the blinders on and focus on going towards that one direction, right? So if you made a decision to, let's say, start an agency, go to a specific industry or niche, try out a particular system, stick to that, right? Stick to that for the next one to two years, right? Because most people, they go into a niche, they stick to it for two months, then they think, oh, my niche is saturated, they jump onto another thing, another business model, thinking that's going to be a solution to their problems, which is not. All right, so lesson two understanding what's in it for them. You got to understand that people don't give a shit about you, right? At the end of the day, people are selfish and people care about themselves. And you got to drill that understanding in, right? Because it's easy to fall into the trap of assuming what people want rather than looking at what they actually want and need, right? So as an entrepreneur, right, as an agency owner, we might think that our offer is amazing, our service is amazing, that our customers need what we have. But the reality is that people simply just do not give a shit about you, right? So you need to be able to understand what's in it for them to work with you, right? How will something you have help them achieve goals? How will something you have help them alleviate problems and pains? How will something you have change their life, right? You got to understand what's in it for the customer to come and work with you, right? And then you can implement this understanding into every other aspect of your business, your outreach for sales and your operations. So for example, with outreach, what I see a lot of people do is that they reach out to a person and they're like, hey, listen, like I've got this amazing offer, blah, 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 client A was able to do that. Um, my company is the best, you know, shit like that, but no one cares. Right? With my cold emails, my offer is focused on like, okay, what's in it for them to jump on the call with me? Right? So for outreach, if you were to implement this understanding, it would be building up an offer that is centered around your customers' needs and wants and talking about them, not you, in your outreach messages. Right? Sales. Pitch deck focus on outcomes and benefits for them and not how good you are because they then they no one cares about your company. All they care about is what it is they're getting by working with you, right? And then also, what do they get out of jumping on a call with you, right? Because they are dedicating their time to jump on a call with you. What are they getting in return for that? Operations, you know, what can we add and remove that will make it easier for the client to achieve their outcome, right? Especially if you're a coach, right? It's easy to think that, okay, we need to add this, this, and this, and that, this, and this, and that, and just kind of over complicate things. Um, I used to do that for my agency, like I would add uh, certain things that, you know, at the end of the day is something I wanted to add, but not what my clients wanted or needed, right? So it just became very complex in terms of operations. And then I ended up removing the stuff that, you know, I didn't think the client needs to get to their outcome. So yeah, having this framework of understanding what's in it for your target audience to do whatever it is you want them to do with you will help you make better decision, right? And this took me three months to understand because before, right, I would talk about how amazing my service is, right? But then I switched my focus on how my service can get them from point A to point B, right? Literally on my first couple of sales calls, I remember talking to the prospect about how amazing the company is, how amazing it is to work with us, uh, how amazing the team is, how amazing we are, how amazing Facebook ads is. They don't care, right? All they care about is how can you get them from point A to point B? And what's the likelihood of you getting them to point B? And what happens if they don't get to point B with you? Right? That's all they care about. So that's lesson two. Understand what's in there for them. And remember, no one gives a shit about you. Right? As harsh as it sounds, that's just the reality of business. Lesson three, it's all a volume scheme, right? If you are currently sending manual looms, if you're sending manual DMs, now that's okay to begin with, but it's going to take you way longer to see results, right? And the longer it takes you to see results, you know, 
the more demotivated you might feel about this whole thing and the more demotivated you might feel when you're first beginning, you might quit, right? So if I was you, I would stop doing manual outreach and I would start building up a system for volume, right? Now, I don't care, right? If you want it in this business, hoping you can make money without putting in money, right? This is just a false reality that a lot of gurus try to sell you. Right, that this business does not need any financial, you know, capital. It was the case. It was the case. Don't get me wrong. Three, four years ago, right, when the SMMA market wasn't as populated with so many different agencies, with so many different offers, with so many different services, right? You could literally DM a business three, four years ago, and they would DM you back, and you would engage in a conversation, and you would book them into a call. Nowadays, prospects are more aware right, of the SMMA market. They're more aware, they built up more tolerance. So now if you go ahead and message a business, they probably won't reply to you, right? Or there's less chance of them replying to you. So you got to put money to make money, right? You got to put money to make money. And I'm not talking about crazy amounts of money. I'm talking about like $100, $200 a month, right, to afford software that will let you send mass amounts of volume, right? And the biggest agencies understand that and they're able to create leverage, which means they run laps around you whilst you're sending your fifth personalized loom of the day, right? Whilst you're sitting there filming your loom video to a prospect that's probably never going to see it, they're sending 1,500, 2,500 outreach messages a day. I even know someone that sends out 25,000 emails every single day, right? And I want you to ask yourself, who do you think will have a better chance of succeeding? Right, you with your fifth personalized loom of the day to a prospect that probably will never watch it because he gets 10 different personalized looms every single day, or an agency that is able to send 1,500, 2,500, 25,000 messages every single day. Right, just be super honest about that and have a think about that. Right, so leverage is created by you know either labor, software, or capital. Right. You can reach the volume with a bunch of different softwares these days, right? You can automate, you know, inbox management and all that stuff with labor, right? So you can delegate some stuff to uh, low, I want to say low quality tasks, but more like low repetitive tasks, right? You can dedicate, you can delegate that to labor capital. The more money you have, obviously, the more you can do, right? So these are the three types of leverage, right? The first leverage point that you need to create for yourself is through software, right? You need to build up software and implement the infrastructures that can help you achieve mass volumes, right? And I'm not saying build your own software, right? I'm saying just find softwares that already do the thing you want to do, right? So rather than sending manual outreach, start figuring this out, right? Start figuring out how you can build up an infrastructure that is going to let you send this amount of messages every single day on autopilot, right? So I would send back then 50 emails per day manually, right? I would hire someone on Fiverr to give me a list of 100, 200 prospects. And I would basically email every single one of them manually, right? I would manually type out the emails, type out the personalized first line and I would send the message, right? And even doing it that way, right, working hard, like you'd consider that working hard, I was not able to book any appointments, right? But once I started learning the volumes game, once I understood how to create leverage, I went from zero appointments to 50 appointments every single month, right? Because I was able to understand leverage, right? And I was able to create leverage through software and labor, right? So please, please understand. The ones who sends more books, more appointments. The one who spends the most gets the most, right? It's just leverage. It's all about leverage in this game. Lesson four, retention is as important as acquisition, right? You always hear about how to book appointments, how to get more clients, how to close more deals, but you barely hear about how you can actually retain your clients, okay? Because personally, I would rather close five clients and be able to retain them for six plus months and always trying to sign five new clients, right? Because reselling your current clients is easier than selling on to new clients, right? Just remember that it's easier to resell your services to clients who already worked with you 
rather than selling your services to clients who never worked with you, right? And it's also less work. Think about it, right? Would you rather sign five clients every single month, but you're also losing five clients per month, right? You essentially begin to run around in circles and you essentially start to becoming a churn and burn agency. Or would you rather sign three clients every single month, but losing only one client per month, right? Yes, you acquire less, but you retain more, right? And every time you retain a client for another month, I would consider this as a win, right? Either way, even if you retain this client for five months already and you were able to retain them for the sixth month, I would still consider that a win and I would still consider that as a close, right? So once you do begin signing on clients, you got to start focusing on the things that you can do to retain them for as long as possible, right? Because a lot of people make the mistake of always focusing on acquisition, right? And then they forget about the clients that they've signed, the clients that put their trust and money into you, right? Which, if you think about it, is a bit of a dick move, but that's just the reality. Like people like to focus on acquisition, or a lot of people like to focus on retention. And this was the mistake that I've done uh, for a couple of months until I realized that retention is as important as acquisition. So once you start signing on clients, start focusing on how to improve the experience, how to improve your communication, how to improve the results, and how to improve the ease of working with you, right? So what I would do is basically I would create a Google form and at the end of every single month, I would send it over to my clients, right? And I'll provide an incentive for that. And I'll gather feedback, right? In order to understand what can be improved and what can be removed. And every month I would sit down and check my feedback and then quickly implement it, right? I wouldn't wait around to implement it, right? As soon as I got feedback and someone said, oh, you know, this and this, this and this. And if I started to notice a pattern, right? With something that I'm doing between all my clients, then that gives me a good idea that, okay, that should be changed. That should be improved or that should be removed. All right, so simply uh, just create a Google form, send it over to your clients once a month and give them incentive to fill that out, uh, maybe like a discount on your retainer or just come up with something, right? Doesn't have to be difficult. But that feedback is gonna be really, really important for you because you're gonna start basically improving your service. And as you're improving your service and you're adding and removing or improving things, clients are just gonna naturally stay longer with you, right? Because the only reason clients drop is due to poor results, poor experience, poor communication. Right? These three things are the reasons why clients drop. So if you're able to improve on all of them, then the clients have no reason to switch over, right? Because as a business, you got to understand your clients are also a business. If something works for the business, why change it? So last lesson, your outputs are your inputs, right? You got to understand everything in business is a system. And the system is a combination of inputs, processes, outputs, feedback, and the market, right? And the better your inputs are, the better your outputs are going to be. And to make your inputs better, you iterate through feedback and data. So your focus should always, always be on systems and improving your systems, right? Systems are literally everywhere. Your outreach is a system. Your sales process is a system. How you work with your clients is a system itself. Your content is a system, right? Every single thing that you do in your business is a system. And in order to improve the things or in order to get better outputs, you got to improve your inputs. And the only way you can improve your inputs is by gathering data, right? And iterating based on that data. So for example, with outreach, right? Your inputs is the message, your offer and the leads you're reaching out to. The processes, right? It's the software and label. Output is appointments. Feedback is the data, right? Your appointment booking rate, your response rate, your positive response rate, your open rate, the market, the niche that you're going for. Right? And then you gotta ask yourself, what can you do to make your message offer needs better? Right? Or what does your data say? Sales, right? Your inputs as a sales script, pitch deck, objection handling, process as a sales call itself, outputs, closes, feedback, close rate, market, niche, right? What can you do to your script, pitch deck, objection handling sheet to have a higher close rate? You know, you gotta understand that this is all in your control. Right? If you're not getting the outputs that you are looking for, something's wrong with your inputs, right? So work on your inputs to make your outputs better, right? 
don't blame anything on anything. Don't blame it on your niche because your niche is always going to exist whether you like it or not, whether you're running a business in that niche or not. It's always going to be there and there's always going to be businesses that are thriving in that niche, right? Because those businesses that thrive in their niche, you know, they have iterated and made their inputs better so they're always getting good outputs, right? So whenever you have a problem in business or whenever you're not getting a certain amount of outputs that you were looking for, just look back into what you're actually inputting into the system and try to see what can you improve based on the data uh, that you're collecting back, right? And creating that feedback loop. So yeah, this has been the five lessons that honestly have helped me the most, right? If not these lessons, I probably wouldn't be here today, right? So please, please make sure to not let this video go over your head. And you actually rewatch it, note these lessons down and always constantly remind yourself of these lessons, right? Lesson one, ability to shut down, create laser focus. Lesson two, understanding what's in it for them. Lesson three, it's all a volumes game. Lesson four, retention is as important as acquisition. And lesson five, your outputs are your inputs, right? These are the most important things. So please, please remember them, note them down somewhere. And yeah, if you have any questions on any of them, make sure to comment down below. If you found value in the video, make sure to subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. I do have a free community where I show you how to go from zero to 10K per month with your agency or coaching business. I will link that down in the comment section down below. And if you want to work with me, I'm not going to try to pitch you or anything, but I will leave my calendar link uh, in the description of the video. So if you want to speak how we can work one-on-one -on -one together, make sure to schedule in that call. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys on the next one.